This video was supposed to be a trip down memory lane. However, I just loaded Ari Alexa footage onto the MacBook Pro and I'm shocked by the results. I just edited a video with Ari Alexa footage on this 11 year old laptop. Hey folks, so today's video is a real throwback Thursday video. What I got here is my first Apple MacBook Pro laptop. And it's actually kind of perfect timing because Apple just discontinued uh, the 15 inch MacBook Pros. They just introduced a new 16 inch MacBook Pro. So this is also kind of a video about where it kind of all started with the 15 inch MacBook Pro. And this is where it all ended with my 2018 model. And this one's really dusty. So technically, this isn't physically my first ever MacBook Pro. I actually sell my MacBook Pros as I upgrade and I sold my first one back in 2012 for the first ever Retina model when that came out. However, I found an old external hard drive which had my time machine backup for my first ever MacBook Pro. So I picked this up on eBay and I only got it for 50 quid. It did not depreciate well. This video was supposed to be just So this is my SSD scratch disc. It's by SanDisk and I currently have a short film on it that's in post-production. Um, I produced it, so I also happened to direct, write, and I might even be in it. I did quite a lot. And it's coming out next year for the festival circuit. But we're gonna see if the MacBook Pro can even handle a clip from it. Uh, we shot it on an Ari Alexa EV camera and it's shot in ProRes 4444 with 10 bit color, a bit rate of over 300 megabytes a second, and it's 2K. So we're gonna see if the MacBook Pro can even play it. It's playing a little bit, I mean, it's quite sluggish. It's not playing at 24 frames a second, it's like playing at half, like it's quite choppy. Uh, this is ungraded as because we, we shoot it in raw. So let's see if Final Cut Express can ingest this. I'd be really surprised if it can. Okay, so we are gonna have a problem. I can't change the frame rate from 25 frames a second. We shot on 24 frames a second because it's a narrative film. So obviously all narrative films shoot on 24. This is for 25, this is more like for television. It's 1080i, it's not even 1080p. So I don't, we're not gonna get the full 2K resolution. But let's have a look. It's, it's imported. It's playing on the viewer. I mean, it's sluggish, but it's kind of at the same frame rate as it was in QuickTime Player. So there isn't any additional like performance drop because it's an editing. You know, I'm gonna try render it in the codec the timeline is in. It's an Apple Intermediate codec. So if it renders in that, I wonder if it'll play smoothly. However, we're gonna downgrade it from 2K to 1080i. Yeah, this is playing smoothly, I, I can't believe it. It actually didn't even take that long to render. I mean, like it wasn't as fast as it's like on a current MacBook Pro, but like it wasn't extremely long for, for the sequence to render. Okay, while we're here, let's see if we can color correct this to make it look like a Rec 709. Um, I don't know if there's that technical lush on the system, but we can probably try color correct it so it kind of looks like that. I don't tend to do too much color correction on films besides technical looks, and that's because the cinematographer I work with, we shoot pretty much what we want the final output to look like. You know, you can't rescue bad footage with a lush. I do more color correction on my YouTube videos and I suppose you can use more stylized LUTs for that type of content. But for narrative film, you can't be going around, you know, doing crazy things in color correction uh, without the DOP's permission. Because if you did, I'd never get a cinematographer to ever trust working with me in my career. So you have to respect what the cinematographer wants their footage to look like. It's why you hired them. Yeah, this looks really similar to how the real footage looks. That, that's insane. Like, it, it's colour correcting. And with the colour correction, it's playing smoothly when you render it. That, that's great. So the last thing I want to do with this footage is frame it properly. So Ari Alexa shoots in 178, but our cinematographer framed it for 235. So we need to letterbox this. Um, I'm going to see this. Yeah, widescreen, it's built into Final Cut Express. This is crazy. 235, yes. Yeah, 23, like it, it, it's there. Like I got it in 235 now. And yeah, you can even keyframe the letterbox so you can pan your footage, which is what I have to do for some of the shots. 
Okay, so playback without rendering with a color corrector and a letterbox keyframe on it. It's like stuttering like crazy, but it's not too bad either. I mean, it, it, there's, there's more frames than a slideshow. It's just obviously not 24 frames a second. It's like six or seven. My expectations was just to try and get this footage to play. But if you, if you pre-render the footage, it works perfectly. It's playing properly now, no, no stuttering or anything. Should we try and export this? It's about like a minute of footage. Okay, so doing like a regular export, like uncompressed, it only took about three minutes. So that's not too bad for one minute of footage. So there you have it folks. One minute of Ari Alexa ProRes 4444 footage, 10 bit color, 2K resolution, one minute of footage only took three minutes to export on this 11 year old MacBook Pro, but like only dual core processor, ancient software, only three minutes. That is pretty amazing. So here's a comparison from the real assembly and then what the laptop produced. If there was a lesson to learn from this, maybe don't trust every YouTube tech review. So basically, I love those YouTube tech reviews that are like, you know, if you're, do if you're doing social media and maybe some light editing, the 13 inch MacBook Pro is fine. But if you need to edit, you need to get the 15 inch MacBook Pro. Because as you can see, this 11 year old MacBook just edited Ari Alexa footage. So the truth is you can pretty much edit cinema quality footage from basically anything. So that was a thing. Now this is on to the second half of my video where you can kind of cringe along and watch me go through the files on my laptop. You can see what a 12 to 15 year old me had on their hard drive. Uh, nothing incriminating though, but uh, my iTunes library is a tiny bit laughable and very embarrassing. <laughs> okay, this is just kind of boring. There's absolutely nothing on my desktop, nothing incriminating, but this weird wallpaper of like a galaxy. So what I do know isn't on the laptop are my old YouTube videos because I searched the external hard drive up and down trying to find my old videos. I erased them years ago and I deleted the channel, which at the time I thought was a good idea to you know, have a, a clean slate. But now, when, now that I'm older, I kind of wish I could go back and watch these old videos of myself. But the time machine backup was quite big, so apparently everything else is on the laptop, just not the videos. Ooh, I chat. Okay, iChat was huge when I was 12. I used to have like a bunch of internet friends. I don't even know how I found them. I don't even know where they are today. AIM doesn't work. Why doesn't AIM work? I need my password. Oh, AOL is gone. <laughs> I swear I'm young. I just, I was just into computers from a young age. iTunes. Okay, so this is interesting because we don't have iTunes anymore with macOS Catalina. We're in a post iTunes era. Oh, these podcasts are downloading. What? MacBreak Weekly. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 125 for January 27th, 2009. 25 years and still going strong. Okay, just tons of Adele, like lots of Adele. I should put that on my playlist. <laughs> that was when he was good. I forgot Will I Am was a thing once upon a time. Didn't he go to work for Apple afterwards? Didn't he like do the ringtones or something? Um, 16 year old me was bopping. Oh, I wish I was as cool now. Okay, that was embarrassing. Let's look at some old photos. Oh, a trip to New York. 
I haven't been to New York in a very long time. And boy, puberty did me well. <laughs> These were like taken on the first iPhone, the iPhone 3G. Not bad for an iPhone 3G. Yep, still have it. This is me, peak 2008 at 12 to 13 years old. MacBook Pro, iPhone 3G. Todd gonna rule the world with these two bad boys. This is Judge, my first ever dog. He died in Christmas 2015. Okay, let's open Google Chrome. I wonder if I can see my old internet history. What are my bookmarks though? Gmail, YouTube, Twitter. This, these are kind of what I just used to say. <laughs> Twitter, Facebook, Geek of Comedy, which is my old, my old brand. Apple, LinkedIn, Google Docs, Flickr, Viddler. Viddler was like a YouTube, but I don't think it ever went anywhere. Let's click into it. Better healthcare communities have three com This isn't Viddler how I remembered it. Okay, let's look at some school documents. French notes. Didn't clearly stick. Something about Somalia. Oh, my junior cert project. So, but one of the junior cert subjects was called technology and we had to make a toothbrush holder. Clearly, <laughs> I did not go on to get an engineering degree in college with, with, uh, with, with, with that. Um, we did a much cleverer thing by sticking to programming and uh, economics and filmmaking because engineering is clearly not my strong suit. My circuit board. Jesus, I was so much smarter back then. I don't even know how to, I don't even know how to read this. Apparently I met a circuit board, a PCB diagram. This is new. A resistor, how did I know this? What's in my app folder? Oh, World of Warcraft. I haven't played World of Warcraft in like six years. And I remember like even buying the expansion packs and paying the monthly fee for it. I think I was like a mage. No, I was, I was the one that heals, I was a priest. And I never got her to level 85 back then. Back then it was level 85 was the max. I think that was with the third expansion pack. Oh, the Sims. Of course I have the Sims on this. Let's play the Sims. Oh, I need to insert the CD. Mm. The CD's upstairs. iWeb. Okay, so before I learned how to code, I used to make my websites in iWeb. And uh, this was like a what you see is what you get. It was so buggy. And like I even did bizarre things in it. Like I remember like making like a custom video player which sounds weird. Yeah, like here it is. Like I was doing some weird thing with iframes and I mean, I know how to code now, but I was desperate once upon a time. But fun fact, I actually won an award for best web design and best website with iWeb. Um, I did enter two years later with like a properly coded HTML, like WordPress thing. And I won a second time, but that was like a more dignified win. I don't know how I won <laughs> with my iWeb uh, website. I must have got like a lot of points for content because I was a YouTuber. Okay, Final Cut Express 4. We need to talk about this. Final Cut Express 4 was what I learned first. Now, I got Final Cut Express 4 again with the laptop back in 2008 and Final Cut Pro 10 came out in 2011. And I was an early adopter of that, I'm now quite proficient. But before that, we were using Final Cut Express. Um, Final Cut Studio was like way too expensive. And when I bought Final Cut Pro X, when that first came out in 2011, it was much cheaper then than it is now. I think it was like, I think it's like double the price now. I learned editing when I was 12 and thankfully I did because now I do filmmaking and I'm producing and I'm saving thousands of euro of not having to send my footage to an edit house. I can kind of just do it myself and I think I can do a pretty good job but uh, I suppose we'll see next year when my film comes out. Okay, iMovie HD. People who've used Macs for a long time will know this. So when I got this laptop, I came with something called iLife 08 and iMovie in iLife 08 was so bad we, all, we were able to download a free older version from Apple called iMovie HD 6 and it was such a cool editing tool. It was like really lean, mean and clean, like it was really quick cuts. Um, like if someone did a third party version of it now for like 4K and for all the new formats, I almost probably use it. Like it was so lean and like it did what you wanted and it was so fast. Okay, so these are video converters. This one's called Episode. I remember this, this is Telestream Episode Pro. And this is because back then exporting videos took a very long time. So you just have to do them uncompressed and then we drag them in here because back then internet was also very slow. 
I have it burned into my brain that back in early 2009, I know for a fact we had three megabyte internet and that wasn't fast enough for 720p video. I always remember to watch 720p video, you'd have to give it a bit of a run up. Thankfully, I am happy to announce that today we have actually gigabit internet in our house now, which is really cool. So we used to have to compress them. And this was a really good one to compress because they got the file size really low, but it kept really good quality. And I think from what I remember, I don't even think I uploaded in QuickTime. I think I uploaded in Flash because back then YouTube was in Flash. And I think if you uploaded in Flash, the YouTube compressor did like less compressing. So there was even less compression. So your video looked even better. I was a nerd from a very young age. <laughs> Thankfully, because I learned these skills professionally from a very young age, I know quite a bit about, you know, the process of I know editing videos, so I kind of know more than people expect me to know at my age. Which is kind of a good thing. It's good to uh, have people underestimate you. Okay, so my work here is done. This video ended so much differently than I expected it to. I thought it was gonna be what's on my first MacBook Pro. But I think editing Ari Alexa footage on an 11 year old MacBook Pro is a much more compelling title for you, the viewer. Maybe my next video I'll just like shoot an entire short film on my iPhone 4. I'll just give it to my cinematographer and we can just do that and edit it on this. I shouldn't be putting ideas into my head. Thanks so much for watching guys. You can uh, follow me on Twitter, at Lilo Cheng. Please subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. If these are the types of videos that interest you, I can kind of see from the analytics. And more importantly, and more to the point, if you wanna tell me what type of videos I should make, leave me a comment below. What did you think of the fact I could edit Ari Alexa footage on this laptop? I mean, that's pretty crazy. Uh, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And thanks so much for watching.